the next morning, the priest, thinking she probably wouldn't go, received a phone call from Anna. And Anna says, which hospital is he at? And the priest said, I'm going there this afternoon. Would you like to go with me? And so they went together. You could experience the tension as the, first, as the two first saw themselves after two years. And she walked up to him and she says, Tom, what did I do that you did this to me? And Tom began to cry and he said, Anna, you didn't do anything. I did it. I was so ashamed I couldn't tell you what had happened. She embraced him and they talked for hours. Towards the end, just a few weeks before the, the young man was ready to, or was about to die, he called his brother in, who was the first one to kind of come around from the family. And he said, Joe, he said, I have AIDS. He said, but I know in my heart now that I am a good person and that God loves me. And his brother looked at him and he says, and he says, I hope that you love me too. And he says, Tom, I love you with all my heart. And he embraced him. The last holdout was the father. The father couldn't quite let go. Tom died. But still, during these times in the hospital, you could see them kind of working towards an understanding towards each other. And that door that had been closed between them was finally opening. But it didn't quite open all the way. And Tom died. Yet he died knowing that his father did love him and did care for him. The night of the wake, the father came up to the priest and he says, Father, I wanted a perfect son. And I thought he was a failure. But as I got to know him again these past few weeks, I found out that he wasn't a failure, that he still was a perfect son, and I loved him very, very much. I tell you the story because it reminds me of the gospel story that we had heard today. We hear a story of closed doors. We hear a story of failure. We hear a story of fear. We hear a story of embarrassment and shame when Jesus comes and stands before those disciples. You know, Jesus could have berated them. He could have sat there and said, hey, where were you guys? You let me go it all alone. Where were you? You promised you'd be faithful. You'd even die for me. And yet you let me go to my death all by myself? And yet Jesus doesn't say that. Jesus comes to him and Jesus says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And then he breathed on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. And each of the, uh, the people in Tom's story, each and every time, every one of them walked into that room. They were walking through a closed door. And, they were, and, and with, along with them came Jesus. And Jesus was saying to Tom, Tom, peace be with you. Your sins are forgiven. And each one of those people the doors, the, they had walked through closed doors. In each case, each of them were sent by the Spirit. And after all, isn't that what Pentecost is all about? Being sent by the Spirit? Pentecost is the story of a community, a community of wounded yet forgiven healers. It is a story about you and me being sent out into the world to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the story of the church, of a community that goes out to the world and opens up those closed doors and lets out the sin and despair that is out there and lets in the healing words of the love and the forgiveness of God. That's what we celebrate today. The Holy Spirit in our lives 
sending each of us, you and me, out into the world to continue the work of Christ. How are we doing? How are we answering that call? How are we answering the promptings of the Holy Spirit? 